The experimental breeder reactor 2 complex is being developed by Argonne National Laboratory to appraise the operation and performance of an unmoderated breeder reactor in nuclear power production, a direct step in achieving an economically feasible large-scale plant. The inclusion of fuel fabrication and spent fuel processing will establish the EBR2 as the first completely integrated power reactor system operating on a closed fuel cycle. The development of this fuel cycle involves the coordinated efforts of the laboratory's chemical engineering, metallurgy, and reactor engineering divisions. The first phase of the fuel cycle being developed consists of pyrometallurgical reprocessing by melt refining. Since the processed fuel is highly radioactive due to residual fission products and transuranic elements, remote operations are required. Prototype equipment is mocked up in full scale. A five foot thick glass shielding window and a 700 pound capacity manipulator are included to study remote viewing and operations. The process sequence begins. The melt refining furnace is enclosed with a bell jar to provide a furnace environment independent of the cell atmosphere. A fume trap to collect volatile fission products is removed. Prior to charging, the fuel pin is mechanically separated from the stainless steel cans and chopped to a pouring length. Due to the self-heating of the radioactive fuel, special containers like the fuel charger must be enclosed and designed for heat dissipation. 10 kilograms of chopped fuel pins are charged to the furnace crucible. The furnace is reassembled. The bell jar confines the gaseous fission products and is sealed to the furnace base by a molten metal freeze seal. High frequency induction is used to obtain the melting temperature of 1300 degrees centigrade. After a three hour liquation period, the melt is tilt poured into a mold. The active metal fission products, which have reacted with the oxide crucible, remain behind as a slag. The more noble fission elements remain with the fuel alloy. Continued recycle of the fuel establishes an equilibrium alloy. Radiation damage studies have proven that this alloy is extremely stable. This was an important factor in selecting the melt refining process for the EBR2 fuel cycle. The mold containing an ingot of purified alloy is transferred to a sampling station. The as-cast ingot contains two protrusions on the bottom which are sheared off to provide the samples required for analysis. On the basis of these analyses and the weight of the ingot, the required amount of additional enrichment and alloying is calculated. Fuel processing completed, the purified ingot is transferred to fuel fabrication, the second phase of the fuel cycle. The primary aspect of the second phase is the development of the injection casting technique. While prototype equipment is being fabricated, development work proceeds in conventional furnaces. The molds used are graphite coated precision bore Vicor tubes. A cluster of these tubes is suspended above the melting crucible. The ingot is vacuum melted and the tubes plunged into the molten alloy. At the same time, the furnace is pressurized and molten metal is forced up into the molds. Dimensional variations of the cast pins are essentially the same as those of the Vicor tubing. Removal of the precision bore tubing is accomplished by crushing. The finished fuel pin is brushed to remove residual glass and requires no further machining. The pins in a carrier magazine are transferred to the final phase of the fuel cycle, 
the reassembly. The initial step performed in a glove box, external to the shielded area, is the charging of an exact amount of sodium to each rib stainless steel fuel can. The purpose of this sodium is to fill the six mil annulus, which will exist between the fuel pin and fuel can. This provides a good heat transfer path and also permits unrestricted thermal expansion and contraction. Placed in a carrier basket and introduced to the process cell, the sodium filled cans are ready for pin loading. Matching of the fuel pin carrier magazine and carrier basket operates a trip mechanism introducing the fuel pins into the sodium charged tubes. The carrier basket containing the assembled fuel elements is placed on a heated Sintron vibrator which melts the sodium and settles the fuel pins to the bottom of the element tube. Final operation of fuel element assembly is the introduction of the restrainer cap and closure by automatic welding. The completed element is leak tested and bond tested before being returned to the sub-assembly. Fuel elements are next assembled with blanket sections fabricated independently of this operation. The fuel elements are threaded onto a location grid. Requirements of accurate sized cooling channels, limited mechanical motion, and normal dimensional tolerances restrict the assembly to a specific pattern. Clustering of the fuel elements limits heat dissipation by natural convection and assembling must be done in a cooling jacket. During loading procedure, a programmer maintains a record of the last element loaded and indicates the next one to be loaded. 91 fuel elements complete the sub-assembly and are encased in a hex shroud. This sub-assembly is a completed product of the integrated fuel cycle as developed for EBR2. Before a reactor concept has conclusively proved economical value as a source of power, both the technical and economical feasibility of the fuel cycle as well as the power cycle must be demonstrated. In this endeavor, the integrated fuel cycle for EBR2 has been developed.